And I want to um, show you how it is. I quote my wood grain that I use in the background of the goddess. Here's a copy of her before, after it's quilted with the dark brown thread, but before we do any staining. And you notice I have the, the, the boards on here are about three inches apart. That's the size that I like to use. Any of my backgrounds, depending on how large or small the piece is, I'll either go for three inches or four inches um, in, in, for my size of my wood planks. This one is three inches. And what I'll do is I'll actually use a ruler and my leather marking pen to mark about where it is I want my, my um, board seams to go. Now, the way I start this is I don't, I don't like, my personal preference is to not have a board seam go across her chin here. So I'll pick it right around her lips or so. And that's where, here's one here that you'll see that's marked and here's her lips. And I'll say, okay, that one, I will let that be the first board. <clears throat> and I'll just put a little dot there as a registration line. Let me know that's where the board is. And then I'll just mark all the way up um, every three inches. And that's where my wood grain, uh, that's where my board seams are going to be. Now, let me show you how I quilt the wood grain itself. Let me pull out my little trusty white board here. I already have a couple of things already on here for you. This is a motif like the side of her face. And... Um, and here's a seam and here's a seam. And so what I'll do, the way I do my seams is I'll start on the edge outside of the, uh, the, the part that's going to be trimmed off. So I'll start over here on the edge and I'll go a straight line right across. That's the seam. And then I want to emphasize that seam to really break up these boards. And so what, what I do is I do what I call messy quilting. Um, and so I literally, I just take my needle and I just messy quilt it. I'm not doing little circles, I'm not doing little um, pebbles, I'm not doing a little teeny um, stippling. I am actually quilting over and over and over my line. And that really helps to find and gives me um, a real deep valley between my boards. Okay. All right. So now when I'm looking at, when I'm talking about my boards, um, the, the grain itself, I, there's three things that I use. I use what I call a straight grain. I use what I call a knot and I have a half knot. Okay, so a straight grain, as all the grain is done with what I and what I refer to as a lazy man's echo, because that's what you're doing is you're echoing your, your previous quilted line, but you're not doing it exactly. And whenever I'm going to do that, I always start at the bottom and work up because it gives me a line to be able to echo. So here's one I'm going to do. Let me show you the straight grain. So what I do is I just go right straight. So I'm echoing my seam line, but not exactly. So he's got some wavers and maneuvers and wiggling in there, which is what you want. And then I'll trace right along the side of her face there in this mock-up here. And I'll come back and see, and I'm tracing, and I'm echoing that line I just previously quilted. And again, if I've got a little mountain there, I'll go up. If I don't, then I go back down. And, some, and I go closer together in some areas and, and further apart in other areas. And so that's why I call it, call it a lazy man's echo because you're not doing exactly. You don't want to do exactly. That's what adds the interest to the wood grain itself. Okay, so I go in the little valley there. I go real close. And, and so that's what adds interest to the wood grain. That's when it really starts taking on the characteristics of a real board. Can I do one more and show you? And I'll continue up until I get the whole board filled. Now, if I want to put a knot in my wood, um, and so there's one right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a knot right here. What I'll do is I'll take my, my leather marking pen and I will kind of sketch out where I want that knot to be. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's, I just remind myself that I want a knot to be there. Okay, so I'll start. I'll start a little bit further away at the edge and when I get to where my knot is I may actually go into my seam line and come back out on the other side. What you're doing is you're building a little place, a little pocket for that knot to be. Okay, Seam line, come back out. And this one I may actually go parallel to the seam line, come back out. So what I'm building is that little pocket right there for that to be. And I go closer when it's around that knot and then a little bit further apart when it gets to the end. So gets to the end and now I'm back where about where I want that knot to be. So this one I'm going to go on the other side of my knot and what I'm going to do I'm literally going to quilt a spiral that has little pointy edges because um, I think wood grain and the knots usually have a little bit pointier edges than the regular spirals and I'll leave, my, leave myself room to be able to get back out. Just echoing again and I'll come back up. 
And then this time what I'll do is I'll go trace up and then I'll go actually on the other side of that knot and continue on echoing my line until I get my knot finished, until I get the board finished. Here I'll go up in the seam line and come back down, up in the seam line and come back down. Okay. Now, in the other ones where I call a half knot, which is usually what happens is when a knot's been cut in half because of making boards. And again, I'll just sketch out where I want my half knot to be, and it's going to go right there. And I'll start by building myself a little pocket to put that half knot in. Working my way down, using that seam line to travel if I need to. And when I get about halfway, like I'm about halfway of where I want my knot to be, this one, I'll actually go on the other side of my half knot. And once I get here, I'll come in and I will then fill in that half knot by just quilting little V's in there. And they don't have to be, you don't want them to be exact, you don't want them to be perfectly the same distance apart, you want them to vary some. Some can be more rounded than others continue to fill in that little V and then I'll follow this line up and then I'll finish filling in my board the same as I did the other boards. Okay. Now when I'm doing, when I'm designing my whole layout of my piece here, I don't want to have, I, I like adding knots and, um, and half knots because it adds more interest to the background but I don't want them all over the place. So I'll just decide ahead of time about, okay, so I want a knot here, I want a knot here, I want a half knot over here, and there's a half knot over here, and then there's a, a full knot up here. So therefore, they're scattered out just to add enough interest.